What's going on everybody, this is Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you another component which is part of the Lightship ARDK that is going to provide you with environment awareness. So why is information important to you? Well, it's important to you because if you're building an application or a game that needs to know about the environment, such as looking at the sky, looking at trees, water in the ground, then the semantic segmentation manager is going to provide you with this information. So I have two different demos in Unity that I want to walk you through. One of them is going to be logging the semantic information to the canvas and then the other one is going to be storing all that information into textures and then displaying to Unity by using raw images. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, I got a lot to cover today and I'm really excited to give you an overview of how the semantic uh, components in Lightship ARDK work. So what you can see right now, it's a demo that I have and there's really not much going on other than I have a canvas with a debug area and also a button that is located right here on the bottom right. And then basically a logger. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to be getting information from the semantic manager and, and that information is going to be displayed in the logger. So there's gonna be two areas in here. One of them is going to be the semantic logger, which is gonna be the scene that we're gonna, we're gonna be working on right now. And then the next thing is going to be a little bit more advanced, but it's going to give you a really good understanding on how the information that is stored on the semantic manager is going to be helpful for your own experiences. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to add a component that is going to allow me to get AR information. So that's going to be by doing AR scene manager and AR scene camera. So if you drag and drop that component and you can create your own camera and add the components, I like to add this one by default because it has everything already set up in here. And then it already has a AR camera position helper, also a AR rendering manager. So the next one that you're gonna need is you're also gonna need, in, in my case, I'm gonna be deploying this to Android and we're gonna need the camera permissions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that. I'm also going to be needing a session. So I'm just gonna do the AR session manager and that's going to be adding a capability checker and also an AR session manager. Once you have that, the last component that it's going to be needed, it's going to be the most important one, which is going to be the AR semantic segmentation manager. And to be honest, they're all really important. This is just the one that is gonna give us the basically the semantic information about what we see through our phones. So once you have these, you got a couple of components in here, which I'm not going to be covering today, but it'll allow you to be more specific on what you want to suppress. And when I'm talking about a channel, I'm talking about whether we're going to be detecting if we have a sky, if we have the water, if we're looking at the ground and this information can be really helpful for things that you're building in AR. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, if we go into scripts, you're gonna see that I already have a couple of scripts in here, but they're not implemented. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop the semantic logger. And once you do that, you're just gonna have, basically it's just gonna be a class with not much in it. All we're gonna have is just, you know, a class that inherits from mono behavior. So the next thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need what's called the I buffer. So I'm just gonna say I semantic buffer and if I make mistakes on some of these names it's because I am learning as you know I'm learning just as you're learning right now so this is going to be what's going to give us awareness of what we're seeing through our fonts and I'm also going to need the AR semantic and this one is going to be segmentation segmentation manager and then I'll just go ahead and name that I think I'll just name that one segmentation manager and we can just bring the namespace for this Okay, so the next one that I'm gonna need as well, is gonna be, I'm just gonna do this on the star meta. We're going to be getting the segmentation manager and then we need to set it, right? So I need to say get component. And because this script is associated with the, with the component that has the AR semantic segmentation manager, then we should be okay by doing this. I'll just do and get that component. I'm also going to be accessing a callback in here, which is gonna be an action. So I'm just gonna say, this one is going to be, I think it's called semantic, yep, uh, semantic. Okay, so there's two. One of them is gonna be the semantic buffer initialize and then semantic buffer updated, which we're gonna be needing the updated. And then once you do that, we're just gonna be adding, you know, a callback to that. It's gonna be an action that gets executed 
on, on that action. So it's going to go ahead and remove this and then bring in the namespace here. And then, yes, we're going to be implementing it. So to implement it, you can just do something as simple as, OK, I want to get the semantic buffer. And then I'm just going to get the arguments. And then we're going to get the sender. And then you're going to see that we have access to the awareness buffer. So what is the awareness buffer? Well, basically, what this is is just basically information about everything that we're seeing through, through our phone. So if we have the sky, like I say, if we have what they call foliage, which is going to be for trees, or if we have an artificial ground, or if we have uh, you know grass, that information is going to be stored in this object, which is of type I semantic buffer. So once you do that, you basically get access to to some of that information. So how do you get that information? Well, we're going to be doing something in here on the update, and then they have something called platform pla platform agnostic input, and then if I do control period. We can bring this in. And this is very similar to the example they have in their website. So I'm not taking full credit for this because Lightship has a lot of documentation about this and also examples like this. OK, so we're going to check and see, OK, do we have any touches on the screen? If we don't, we basically going to exit out. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. So I'm just going to say that we need to get the touch. And in order for us to get the touch, and the reason why we're using this is so that we can do this if we're using, you know, if we're doing it in the Unity Editor, it's agnostic. We can also use it with touches on our phones. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do here is I need to get the touch. So I'm just going to get the first touch. And then we can also do a if statement. So this is very simple. And if you're familiar with the touches, then you're going to be familiar with this. So we're just going to do this on the begin method. Okay, so how do we get information about the, you know, about the semantic buffer and what channels are available? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, I'm going to get the position of basically my touch on the screen and we can just convert that to an int and then we can just say touch and then position and then X and then I'll just copy that and we'll just do it also for Y. The next thing that I can do as well, if you do the semantic segmentation manager, and I believe they have the semantic buffer processor. And you're going to see here that we have, you know, a channel count, how many channels we have. We can also get the channel names at a specific index, which is what I want to do because that's going to be easier for us to understand. And then I'll just say this is going to be X and Y. Okay, so this is going to give us an array of names, right? This is going to tell us if we're basically selecting a pixel either on the sky, on the ground, or we happen to have multiple basically multiple. If we had, let's say, the sky and also the foliage, which is going to be a tree, and the pixel is overlapping, we might get two of those different channels. So we want to know about, about those. So what we can do here is we can say that this is going to be channels at touch position. And then, all right, this is going to be an array, right? This is not going to be just one. I mean, it could be one, but in this case, it's going to be returning an array of channel names. And I also have an array for each extension in here. And the reason why I did this is because I didn't want to have to do a for loop every time. So what I'm going to do here to basically display that information is we're just going to pass in or my logger. And you can get this if you want to get it from, you know, one of my old repos, you can get it. Or I'm going to be making this completely repo available in GitHub. And it's going to be in Patreon for the first few weeks. And then I'll make it available for everyone. But anyways, it's going to be getting, you know, for each element in this array, we're going to be passing that to the, to an action, which is going to be log info. So if we go into the for each, it's basically going to be invoking the logger info with an argument. And then, you know, it's going to display that information to our logger. So if I go back to Unity and we look at the components here in Unity, I'm going to have to also make sure that the bug area has the the actual logger associated with it. And, and I do have it already set up. So again, you can, you know, you can look at this repo to know how it's implemented. But the next thing that you also need to do, which I already have in here, is the vir virtual studio. So the virtual studio is going to be available as well if you go to Lightship and then ARDK virtual studio. And then it's going to give you this really cool component, which I just snapped to the bottom. And you have multiple mock scenes in here that you can use. You can use the park pond, you can use the living room. And just to give you uh, more information about that, if you search for park pond, I want to make sure that you have this layer associated with this component and assigned to all the children's. The layer is called ARDK Mock World. 
The reason for that is because it's going to be important for what we're going to be doing to be able to detect what we're looking at. And then there's also another one that we can also use, which is the living room. So if I were to search in here for living room, you're going to see that I get that. And just by the way, these are going to be part of that ARDK mock environment. So you guys can download that. You can see that this one doesn't have it associated. And if you, have, you, don't, if you don't have that layer, you can also just add that layer you know, manually. And I'm going to say yes, assign it to the children's. So if we go back in here, there's going to be the one that I'm going to be using. And if we go, we should be okay. If I go, I just want to check a couple things. The AR session manager, we're going to need to set this to mock. And that way we can use basically this uh, mock environment. And what I'll do here is I'll hit play, make sure that I don't get any errors. I mean, if I get errors, then we'll fix it. But you guys can see that I can go and look around and I can also double click here in the camera and then we can get closer. And before you deploy this to your device, just make sure you go to your AR camera scene and you don't have the, the AR mock world enable. Otherwise it's going to, it's not going to work. It's going to basically render that. We don't want to render that when we go to the real production build. Okay. So once you do that, if you start clicking around, we should see that I am clicking on the sky. So I'm getting the sky. If I click on the water, it is detecting the water. And how does that work? Well, if we go into one of these components in here, we look at the trees and you look at this tree here and I expand it and there should be, yep. There is a mock semantic label associated with each one of the components in here. So if you wanted to create your own environment, you can create your own environment. You just have to make sure they're labeled correctly with this semantic. That way you can do tests. You can either add a cube and then basically make that cube be, you know, have a mock semantic label and then one of these channels and then everything should just work just fine, right? So I can click on everything. We can go in here and then go back. So we have water. We should also have cement in here. Well, which in this case is gonna be the artificial ground. And there's other channels in there. That there's also a ground and also a natural ground that you can, you can look at. So in this case, it's ground, this one is grass. So they have different, you know, mock semantic labels associated with it. And the other thing that I can also do is I can get channel names and I don't believe I implemented that just yet. So we can go back in here and we can add another, another reference in here. And this one is just going to be a button. We can say get channel names button. And also let me know if you like videos like this, where we just go step by step, step by step, instead of me fast forwarding, because it's going to help me understand what people like. Okay. So in here, I'll just do, we're just going to add a listener and then I'll just do it in line. We don't need to, we don't need to create a new method for that. So if we have these already enabled, so we want to make sure that the semantic buffer has been, you know, has been set. Otherwise we might get errors. So I'm just going to say if the semantic buffer is not null, then we can do, we can try to get the channel names, right? So I can also do here, we can do, okay. So semantic buffer, can you tell me some of the information about the channel names that you currently have? So I can do this and I can do my for each. And again, I can just say logger and log and then log info. And we can just basically set this as warning so that you can see them uh, with a different, basically a different color. And then what that's going to happen is we're going to be clicking on it and then we're going to get all the channel channels that are available from the semantic buffer. And then if we go back in here, I need to also add a reference to my button if I haven't done it already. And we also need to make this one serializable. Otherwise we won't be able to associate it through the inspector. And then once that happens, we should be able to associate our button in here and we should be able to you know, get channel names. We're going to be able to click on that. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit play, see what happens. And we have our beautiful environment here. If I click on get channel names, you're going to see that the ones that are in yellow, that means that those are warnings. In this case, this is just for debugging purposes, but we can see that we have sky ground, artificial ground, water, building, foliage, grass. We don't have a building in here. If we wanted to, you know, if we wanted to get a building and select a building, we could get a cube and basically uh, add one of the labels, semantic labels to it. But anyways, that allows you to do that. So if I wanted to click all around, then I should be able to identify what those pixels represent. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do, is going to be a little bit more complicated, but I think you're going to like it. So if we go back into the semantic raw images, I'm going to go ahead and double click it. Okay. So in this other demo, we're going to be extending the capabilities of semantic a little bit more. 
And the reason why I have this clear mask is because I'm going to be generating masks, which is basically gonna give us a raw image of everything that we're seeing through our phone. So if we have the sky, if we have the trees, all of those are going to be masks that get generated and basically textures that get generated. And we're gonna be creating them dynamically. So if we have, let's say seven channels or six channels, we're gonna be able to get a channel for each one of those. And then basically we're going to be creating a raw image that is going to be able to display each one of those masks. And then the reason why I have this minimum and maximum alpha is because I wanna be able to, to change the, basically the opacity, the alpha value of one of those masks so that we can see how does that reflect when we're running this in actually our phone or when we're doing the park phone or the other, the living room demo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by looking at the script first and then we'll go back through and then remap everything. But I already have an AR camera in here, the AR scene camera, and it has everything that I already said from the previous, you know, from the previous scene, which was the semantic logger. This one is gonna be specifically to semantic raw images. And there's gonna be also another one that I'm gonna be doing on the next video, which is gonna be using shaders. So for this one, we'll just keep it with the two. And then on the next video, we can make, you know, cooler and, and other more advanced use cases. So once we have, once you look at these, then just go ahead and follow along because I'm gonna be implementing the semantic raw images. So if you go into it, there's really not gonna be much in here. And I have a bunch of variables in here that I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste because uh, otherwise it's gonna be, it's gonna be a too long of a video, but Anyway, so I have a couple of buttons in here, which is gonna be what we're gonna be mapping. So the generate mask button is gonna go through and generate basically a raw image for each one of the channels that we have. And then this one is gonna be clear mask button, which explicitly says what it's gonna do. I also have a reference to the slider for the minimum alpha, maximum alpha, and then also we're gonna be displaying the value of the slider. So that's what we're gonna be using Text Mesh Pro to do those. And then we have a semantic texture, which we're gonna be using another method to basically populate this variable. And then again, in this one, we're gonna be using the AR Segmentation Manager, which I showed you on the previous demo. I also need access to the semantic buffer. So that's what that variable is. And then this dictionary is going to be created to keep track of basically each channel. And then I'm also gonna have a raw image for each one of the channels and also a reference to the texture that we're going to be getting for each one of the channels. So that's what you see that. And then channels in pairing, what that is, actually channels pairing, what that is, if I go back into Unity, you're gonna see that I have this object called channel. So I'm gonna be placing all the different raw images in the, basically in that game object. That way we have all everything organized into that game object and that's going to be the pairing. So if we go back, let's go ahead and go back and see why we're getting an error in here. And why are we getting an error if we haven't even done anything just yet? So let me go back, okay, there we go. So it didn't refresh just in time. So the, the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually get the reference to the segmentation manager. So I'm just gonna do that on the star method. So it's gonna be very similar to what we did before. I'm just gonna get the component and then this is gonna be the AR semantic segmentation manager. I'm also going to be getting the callback in here. So, and it's not a callback, it's basically an action. So I keep calling them callback. So sorry for those who know C Sharp really well. And then you're probably just trying to understand what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is basically, I am binding you know, to this action. So I'll just do my plus and then equal and then tap. And then that basically is gonna generate the method that is gonna get executed when the semantic buffer gets updated. So. I'm also gonna need access to the channels, uh, actually the channel, channels parent. And then to do that, we're gonna be accessing, I'm just gonna do find objects of type and then canvas. And then in here we should have a find meta. I think we can just transform and then find. So this one is gonna be the channels, right? This is the one that I show you that was right inside the canvas. Now, what we need to also do is I need to implement the generate mass button method. So what I'll do to do this is we're gonna be just, you know, accessing the on click and then add a listener. And then on my listener, I'm just gonna be implementing it. So I just do my parenthesis there, parenthesis there. And then the first thing that we need to do is we need to access, well, we need to make sure that the buffer, it's not, it's not null, right? The semantic buffer. Otherwise, we shouldn't be doing this because it hasn't been initialized. 
And this could happen if we click on it before the semantic buffer update gets called. So in fact, we can go down here and we can say, just like we did on the previous one, we can just delete this big, you know, namespace, we can just bring it in. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say arcs and then I'll access the sender and then the awareness buffer, which is what we did before. Okay, so if we have that already set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the, the channel. So it's gonna be, again, this guy or the ground or any one of the ones that are currently available. And I'm gonna get the channel names. I'm also going to get the, from the semantic buffer, I'm gonna get the channel names. And then what I'll do here is, we'll just print them out so that we know, you know, just like what we did before. And then I'll just say instance. And then I think I did warning on the previous one. And then what I wanna do though, is I wanna be able to, if I go back into it, let me show you. I wanna be able to click on generate mass. And then if I want, if I generate all the mass, I wanna be able to clear them and then generate them and clear them. And all if I wanna generate them every time and then clear them, clear them and generate them, then I wanna make sure that I'm clearing them out from this dictionary. So that's what I'm gonna be implementing as well, which we'll get back to it in just a second. So for now, I'll just say, this is gonna be calling a meta call. And let me make sure that I have that right. And then we can just comment it out and come back to it. Okay, so if we have already the channels and we have, we're printing this out and we have the buffer initialized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from each one of the channels, we can say channel and then in channels, and we can say that. And this is where we start to create some of the objects dynamically. And if we go in here, I'm gonna say channel geo, which, which stands for channel game object. I'm just gonna be creating a new game object. And then we'll just use our string interpolation in there. And then this is gonna be image. And for the channel, for the name, I'm gonna be appending the, the word of the channel. So it's gonna, this is gonna say, raw image underscore sky or raw image underscore ground, depending on what we, you know, what channels we have currently available. And then for the type here, I'm just gonna say type of, and it's gonna be reg transform because we're gonna be creating raw images and they are going to be having a reg transform in there. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say geo. And then I also need to basically associate these to the right. Actually, I need to do set parent. And the parent in this case is gonna be the object that we have in here. That way we associate, we, we create these ones as childs of the channels in pa channels parent. I don't know why I keep saying channels in parent. For some reason, I thought that that's how I name it before. And then we need to get the transform, right? Because that's how we associate a pair, you know, a child to a parent. And then the next thing that I need to do here is gonna be channel raw image. This is where we're actually creating a raw image. And I'll just say add component. And then it's gonna be of type raw image. And we can just do that. Then I need to make sure that I have the, basically I have it a stretch and it's all the bounds of the image are sized correctly. So I have a couple of values in here that I already, that I already set. And one of them is gonna be direct transform and the anchor minimum and the anchor minimum in here, it's gonna be 0, 0, or you can do vector zero. I think it's vector two zero. I think it's the same thing. And then we can also do raw image and anchor max. And then in this case, I'm gonna set it to vector and it's gonna be one comma one. And then on the last one, we're gonna do channel raw image, right transform. And this one's gonna be the anchor positions. So just gonna set it to zero, zero. And you'll see how this looks as soon as I run it. And then I also need to, I want to basically make the color of the raw image more dynamic and so we can do that by doing channel raw image and then i'm also going to be accessing the color and then for this one i'm just going to be doing random and then color hsv and i'm just going to say this one is going to be zero and we can just do floats just copy that value and we can just do one f on this one and then i think i did one f and one f and then i'll do one f comma 0.5 and then comma 1.1 1, 1 f and then this value here the alpha minimum and the alpha maximum we're going to be getting it from our slider and we're just going to do the value here and then i can just say max alpha that value so basically what's going to happen is it's going to this is going to be generating a random color 
So let me just go ahead and make sure. So it's gonna be zero. And if you look at the parenthesis, parenthesis in here, it's gonna be the hue minimum, hue max, saturation minimum, max. It basically creates really cool looking colors. That's basically what that's doing. <laughs> Okay, so now on the channel info, I'm gonna be adding this information. So the key is gonna be channel. And then we need to also set uh, a channel raw image. So I'm just gonna do this. And then I'm using the new way of creating a tuple. So that's what this is doing. I'm gonna be passing that semantic texture. And this is basically going to be populating our dictionary in here. Okay, so if I don't have the semantic buffer initialized already, we can go ahead and go in here and say logger the instance the log error. And we can say something like semantic buffer not initialize. That way we know what's happening, right? And then we need to also implement our clear mask. So if I go down in here, we can just do private void clear mask and we can just go ahead and implement it. Okay, so in the clear mask, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna be doing something very sim simple of what we did before. We want to make sure that first our channels that count is greater than zero. Otherwise, there's really not, not a reason to clear it. Clear or dictionary, so it's going to do clear. I also want to remove the game objects that we already created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say transform the child in, and then we can access our channels parent. And then we can say transform. So it's going to allow us to go through each one of the childs. And then I can just do destroy child the game object. Let me just make sure that I can type out right. So we're just gonna go ahead and you know make sure we have items in our dictionary. If we do, we clear them. And then if we're clearing them out, we're also going to be removing the game objects from, from that dictionary. So now what we need to do is I also need to implement the what we're gonna be doing on the semantic segmentation manager, the, the semantic buffer updated. So when the semantic buffer gets updated, we also need to get the texture information from that semantic manager. So what I'm gonna do to do that is we need to also do, just do a little looping in here. It's gonna do the current channel in channel info. And we can go in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be accessing the channel. So this is where we start to get more information from the, you know, from the current channel that we're, that we're getting, that we're looping through. So we can tell the semantic buffer, ask a question and say, okay, do you have this index? And then, you know, what, what's going to be the index from the channel that we're on. So I'm just going to say current that key. So if this was the sky, this is going to tell me, okay, what is the index of that channel, which the name is the sky. If this was the ground, then it's going to give us basically the index and I'll link the documentation. So you know what those indexes represent. Okay. So once we have the channel, one thing that we can also do is we can get basically the texture 2D and I'm going to say channel texture. And then what I'll do here is I'm, say, I'm gonna say channel the value, and then we can access the texture. And I'm also going to be doing the same thing for the raw image. I'm just gonna say, we're gonna just say channel raw image. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did above it, except we're gonna be accessing the, the raw image. So for the item in the dictionary, we're gonna get the texture, and we're also going to be getting that raw image. So now we need to tell the, the segmentation manager and there's actually something here called semantic buffer processor, which is going to allow us to copy the texture. And they don't recommend that you do this because it's, it's not as performant as using a shader, but I'm gonna be doing a video for the shader for the next time. So just know how this is, you know, so that you learn how things work. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be getting the texture. So I'll just put it, so they're using a ref, so we can basically get it out into this variable by just accessing the, the reference. Of these uh, of the object that we're passing in. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say channel texture, and then we also need to get the actual channel. So this is so that we can tell this object what is the channel, what what texture do we want from that channel. So we can say, okay, you know what? If this is a sky, I want to get the texture for the sky. That's basically what that is. That is saying, and make sure that you do the right one. So in this case, actually, this is gonna be the channel. This is gonna be the texture. The last one is going to be the orientation. So we can do orientation. And then in the orientation, we can say screen orientation, which is gonna give us the current orientation that we have on the device. And we can just go ahead and you know align this correctly, reindent that correctly. And then what I'll do here is we also have the, the channel raw image. So let me make sure I access that. 
And then at this point, we should have the channel texture, so we can just assign it to the current channel raw image texture to the channel texture that we're asking for. And then if we do that, then we should be able to get everything that we need into the specific raw image. I know that this is a lot, but this information, you know, you can pass through it and then test it, and then it's gonna make more sense as you're testing it. Okay, there's gonna be a couple more things in here that I need to do. So let me do that as well. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to make sure that if I am clearing the, if I'm clicking on the clear mask button by itself, we we actually execute it. So we're just gonna do clear mask, actually clear mask, which is gonna be or the method that we implemented. And then I also need to make sure that we are getting the right value from or a slider. Otherwise right now it's just gonna be set to whatever is set on the inspector. So we need to do a couple of things in here. I need to, also track the on value change events. So I'm just gonna do this or set it to V, which is gonna be the value of the of the actual slider. And then I'll copy this and we'll just do it again for the max. And make sure you spell that correctly. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna update the label, right? Because that's we wanna see that happening. So I'll use our string interpolation in here, and this is gonna be the value, the minimum alpha value. And then I can also put parentheses in here and then it's gonna be V because it's gonna be the value that we're going to be displaying. And then I can do the same thing here. I'll just do max and then we'll have this set to max. So the other thing that I also wanna do is I wanna make sure that I set this by, you know, when I, when I start the game. Then, so what I'll do here, I'll just do, instead of doing V, we'll just do, it's gonna be value. And then this was going to be my max. And this will be max, and I'm sure I will have a couple errors in here, and I'm not surprised if I miss anything, but... Okay, so, this is an overview. We're basically getting connectivity to the Segmentic Manager, also binding to some of the components, and then when we generate mass, I wanna make sure that I create the textures, the raw image, and then I populate my dictionary. That's basically what this is doing. And then in here, we're basically just capturing the actual texture by asking, you know, the semantic buffer processor what the texture is for each one of the channels in the dictionary. And then this is just to clear all of our mass. So pretty straightforward for the most part. So if we go back in here, now we can start binding some of this information given that I didn't make any mistakes. So let's see if that is the case. So this is gonna be my binding here. So I'm gonna associate that and then clear. I also have a binding there. And then minimum alpha is gonna be a slider. Maximum alpha is gonna be that. And then basically, our labels are going to be set correctly in here. So if I didn't make any mistakes, let me make sure I associate that, then everything should work. So let's see if this is gonna work out of the bat, which I doubt, so we'll see. Okay, it's gonna hit play, and right now we don't see anything. And make sure that you look at the alpha values, right? I got 0.2 and then 0.8. So if I hit generate, actually that worked, I'm surprised. You can see that we have the raw images created for each one of those components. So if we go in here, we have a raw image for the sky. And notice this texture here where my mouse is on the right hand side towards the middle of the, of the screen. If I were to move around, you're gonna see how that is getting generated on real time, which is really, really impressive. And let's see if we can find the water, right? If I go and make sure that I scroll correctly. And okay, there we go. So this is very sensitive. So just make sure that when you scroll, if I can go back actually, so it's not, there we go. So I have the grounding here, and if we go into the ground, you're gonna see that there's a texture, which is this blue right here. And if we go into the water, you're gonna see that we also have a texture for the water, which is what you see right here. And the cool thing with this is I can move around, right? I can go ahead and we can, I'm using my keyboard to, to traverse this actual park. And we have a tree here, and you can see that we have a little bit of the water showing, we also have a little bit of the sky here. We also have our ground, which is this texture. So you can do a lot with this information. So let me go ahead and move a little bit to the right and maybe right there. And you can see how, you know, if we go back into our foliage in here, I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that correctly. You can see that that has that. So what else can we do with this, right? I can clear all my masks and you can see that that got generated. I can generate a new mask. And I can keep on generating new masks. You can see the representation of those masks in real time. So the other thing that I can also do here, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit more. And I'm gonna generate mask, clear it. Let's say that I want it to be this value a lot higher. 
Now you can see that, you know, if I go, let's go ahead and go maybe all the way up and maybe 0.8 to 1. And you can see that now we don't see the real world, but we can see the mass that get generated. And this is really important for debugging purposes. I can clear it and then I can click generate, clear it, generate, clear it, generate, and that's going to show you. So if I go all the way up, you're going to see that now nothing looks like real because the, the raw values on each one of these are going to be set to you know, 100% on the alpha value. So the other cool thing that I can do with this too, if I go back into my living room, which actually I haven't gone into my living room yet, I could go ahead and hit play. And you're gonna see that we have a completely different mock scene that we can also play with. If I go back, if I go closer and generate, you can see how it's generating a mask for, and if I click on some of these ones, this one looks like I can't click because I haven't generated, I haven't associated the, the actual, actually I didn't implement that on this. Let me go ahead and go back in here and go into our raw images. And I didn't implement the click event on this one. We could actually go in here and I can copy this and which is gonna allow me to get basically the current channel on the touch selection. And we can go ahead and go in here. And I think everything in here looks fine. I just need to add in the platform agnostic and I have everything set up correctly. So if I go back and let it reload, you're going to see that now we should be able to click. I'm going to hit play and can wait until it. Okay, so now I can click on the ground and and in this case, I have a foliage in here, which is the trick. I can click on the ground. I can generate my mask. I can look down. I think I can go. There we go. And we can click on generating different mass so that we can see, you know, the tree getting kind of its own mass. And then there's this different type of ground. There's also the chairs and I don't know which ones are the chairs but it's a blue so that one was considered let me go back in here and this guy i think this one was considered as the foliage for some reason and maybe that's because they got it flagged that way but anyways that gives you uh different information about you know using a different environment and that's honestly everything that i wanted to show you guys today if you guys have any questions about using semantic information in your ar applications or games let me know in the comments and just know that i'm going to be doing another video with similar implementation but by using shaders so the other thing that i also wanted to make sure that you know is there's going to be a template challenge that the lightship team is basically launch launching on this month so you get up to the end of the month which is the end of june so just make sure that you participate on that because they're going to have i think it's about ten thousand dollars that you can get which is going to be the maximum amount. But not only that, you're going to be able to contribute to future creations of augmented reality applications and games. So just make sure you participate. I'm going to be putting the link to that competition in the description of this video. So that's everything that I have for you guys. If you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.